anyone who predicts that something can't be done uh, is being pretty rash considering what's happened in the last two or three hundred years. Welcome back everybody. We've been asking your thoughts about these technologies we've been discussing today. What you think is going to have the most effect in the future, your future. Well, according to our CNN Future Summit SMS poll, 50% of you think robots will have the most impact on your lives. Hugo's happy about that. Followed by stem cells, genetics and cybernetics. So there you go, that's the result of that. Now, we want to take a moment to ask our panellists for their visions mm -hmm. of the future. Let's start with Professor Junho Oh. Uh, tell us how you see the world ahead. Uh, yeah, the, uh, already the age of robot really started actually. But the, uh, we don't see any main robots in near, but in 20 years, you will be surrounded by full robots. But the, you cannot see which one is real robot and which one is not, because the, all the gadgets and home appliances will be robotized. They just don't look like Hugo. Yeah, there they, they must be, yeah, something like this, yeah, one, but not many. All other things, the robotic function, like as the means mobility and intelligence. If two elements are added to the existing gadgets, then it become robotized. So the old appliances will be robotized, so the, uh, you may feel that, that there isn't robots, but you will be surrounded with robots. All right, okay. <laughs> Joanne Pransky. <clears throat> We are going to make the shift from biological to technological evolution and in the near future robots will be as pervasive as computers. We will be completely dependent upon them. They will be part of our new nuclear family. They will be our companions. They will be our teachers. They will be our nannies. They may even for some people be their lovers. But we have a wonderful future to look forward to as technology does what we shouldn't be doing and we need to address the issues of safety and security and what it's like to be human to human interaction and human to machine interaction. Dr. Alan Coleman. Well, I feel the work that I and many others are involved in uh, will transform the prospects of people aging. I think they'll have better qualities of life and longer lives. I think the first therapies will be expensive and not available to all, but I believe that the basic insight this type of work generates will lead to cheaper and simpler remedies uh, for all people. Uh, I think that it will pose challenges to society uh, in, in terms of how do you deal with the longer length of lives? I think we already have to face enormous challenges with the degradation of the environment, which might prevent this vision happening. Uh -huh. But I believe that governments will get together, and if they have the political will, these uh, things will come to pass. All right, Daniela Serki, your thoughts? Um, I think we are mastering life and uh, whatever the result is, I mean it can be an implant, it can be genetic modification, it can be cloning, uh, all these results um, are from the fact that we master life. Um, as I said, I think we are about to merge with computer, but uh, of course I'm not Nostradamus, but um, what I think is that we, we should be aware that all of us are responsible for the future we are building and I wouldn't like us to wake up one morning and look around and say, oh, is that the future we were building with hope? So it might be a nightmare as many people, no, it might be, sorry, <laughs> contrary, it might be um, a dream. There are many people promising a bright future, but it might also be a nightmare and I want us to choose what we want. All right, Dr. Jacobs. I think we're going to be able to engineer biology as, as easily as we engineer computers and cell phones and that has enormous implications for healthcare and energy. We're going to see custom-built microbes to produce fuels from our trash I think the real challenge is how do we level the playing field? How do we get the technology out to people in the developing world who usually don't get access to this technology? It's usually only made available to those who can afford it. And Amazing. that's the real challenge going forward. Fascinating work. It uh, wouldn't be a future summit if we didn't get a thought from Hubo. What have you got? What do you think? Robots can do dangerous and difficult work instead of humans. The lives of humans will be better and happier than now in many ways. Well, that's, that, that's what he says. Do we believe him? We shall see. That wraps up our program of man and machine. But this is just the beginning for CNN Future Summit. Let's take a look at what lays ahead.
I'm Peter Diamandis, Chairman of the XPRIZE Foundation. On the next CNN Future Summit, we're going out of this world. That's right, Peter. On our next program, the future of transportation on the ground, in the air, and beyond. At this point, there's at least six to eight teams building private spaceships. So I expect that you and I will be able to actually buy a ticket to fly into space probably in late 2008, 2009 the latest. That CNN Future Summit, World in Motion, coming to you in December. Or our thanks to our audience here, you for watching and our esteemed team. And for our CNN Future Summit team, I'm Michael Holmes. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in the future. Football. Hyundai, official partners of the 2006 FIFA World Cup.